Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Beloved, if you seek the Lord, if you search for him with all your heart, you will find him. We often spend so much energy, we spend so much effort and time seeking things, seeking people, seeking money. We expend a lot of energy seeking affection, seeking approval on all kinds of things, things that are temporary, things that will pass away. But today, saints, my message to you is that we need to seek Jesus Christ. Before you seek the things of this earth, call on the name that is above every other name the name of Jesus Christ. I encourage you to seek protection under the lion of the tribe of Judah. Seek tranquility from the Prince of Peace. Seek God Almighty, the one who is, who was, and who is to be. I encourage you to seek, to call, to chase the one who commands millions of angels the one who speaks and creates. Call on the one who has the keys to life and death in his hands. So whatever situation you face today, whatever circumstance or situation you're up against, God wants you to call on him. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Psalm 50 verse 15 says, Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. And so, I want to encourage you. When you look at God's word, when you look at his promises, he says, Trust me in your times of trouble and I will rescue you. He says, abide in me, and I will restore you. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So let your hope be found in God. He has the perfect solution each and every time. So call on him, whether it's day or night. With this understanding, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my Redeemer and the Good Shepherd, I come before you today with a humble heart and my faith lifted up. Your name is set high and above all other names. Thank you, Lord for your amazing and your endless love. I praise your holy name today, and I acknowledge that you alone are God. Yours is the power and the glory and the honor. Thank you, Father, because you are faithful to equip me with all that I need. You are faithful to have given me the resources that I need to walk with boldness and authority in this life. Your wisdom is unparalleled and your power is unmatched. You are a God who provides us with all that we need, with more than we need, above and beyond all of our expectations, whether it is healing, restoration, protection, or peace. We look only to you. We look only to you, Lord Jesus. When I'm weak, Lord, you're strong. So I pray that your Holy Spirit may empower me. May I have an open mind as you reveal heavenly things to me and guide me to walk in the path of righteousness. 
I invite you, Holy Spirit, to be my counselor and my friend. Set me free from my wayward tendencies and desires as I look to build a relationship with Jesus Christ. Free my mind of everything that seeks to hamper or slow my development as a believer. Free my mind from all constraints of stress or depression. For I've not been given a spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. As I embrace your presence and power, I ask that my life will reflect my journey with you. You are a God who has always been faithful. Whenever I needed healing, I found it in your arms. Every time that I have felt empty, I have found wholeness in your presence. And I thank you, Lord, because even when I have felt lost, you have been closer than a brother. You have been a lamp to my feet. May you give me the strength required for each day. May the Holy Spirit lead me into a future that is rooted in Christ. I pray that you would renew, repair, and revive my heart, my mind, and soul. I speak peace into every area where there is unrest. I pray for closure in every area that has any voids. Let nothing of this world unsettle my heart. I declare your word over my life and I say, Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I say my God shall supply all my needs. I say that nothing is impossible with my God. I say that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I thank you for giving me the strength to overcome the devil. I thank you for giving me the power to walk in victory and the power to defeat sin. It all comes from you. So I bless your holy name. I humble myself and I surrender all that I am to you. I trust and believe that you will redeem me and you will make me whole. Grace upon grace is what I will experience in my life. In Jesus' name. I confess that all is well within my soul. All is well within me. I confess that all is well in my life and in my home. May the Holy Spirit grant me boldness and courage. May he help me to be strong and firm in faith. I pray that I will not be found to be fearful in any area of my life. I pray that I will not be a believer who is oppressed by worry, by anxiety, or by stress in Jesus' name. Father, I claim your word and say surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I have victory in the name of Jesus. Victory over any evil. Victory over every Goliath. I declare that I have victory over the obstacles set by the enemy through the power that's in the blood of the Lamb. Power that allows me to overcome daily to be blessed daily, to wake up in your grace and mercies each day. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for hearing my prayer, King Jesus. Amen. I want to encourage you to be unshakable in your faith. I want to encourage you to make sure that you are rooted in Jesus Christ. Make sure that you are anchored in the one who died and rose again. Make sure that your hope, your faith 
is built on the firm foundation that is the Son of God. Take the example of Daniel in the Bible. Although he was thrown into the lion's den, he was unshakable in his faith. He was anchored in Jesus. Look at Paul and Silas, beaten and chained up in a dark prison. But they still found the faith to pray and praise the Lord at midnight. Why? Because they knew that the one whom they were anchored to was greater than their circumstances. They knew that Jesus Christ was greater than those chains. He was greater than any punishment they would face. I pray that we may all have unshakable faith. I pray that we might be secured and anchored in Jesus Christ. As you listen, may you receive these words and be charged up in your faith. Stand your ground and trust in the Lord. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So even if all the odds are against you, continue to trust in the Lord and he will raise up a standard against the enemy. People of God, don't be defeated in your heart. Don't feel defeated in your mind. No matter what you face, be anchored and fixed on Jesus. The trial you face may not look like Paul and Silas in prison. It may not be a den of hungry lions, but your situation might seem just as hopeless and just as intimidating. However, when you're in the thick of it, when you have nowhere else to go, don't allow yourself to be moved. Be unshakable in your faith. Be unshakable because you have God's promises to fall back on. Be unshakable because you have the Holy Spirit who will be your strength and your helper. Jesus Christ is the only sure foundation in this cold, ever-changing world. He is our steadfast anchor. Circumstances change. People change. Social norms and public perceptions change. But the Word of God remains true forever. So be unshakable, saints. Be unshakable. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in your word in Matthew 24, verse 35, you say, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. I believe this is why I stand confidently in you. That's why I can cling to you. If ever I feel like I am overwhelmed by the busyness and chaos of life, I pray that you will rescue me and place me in your arms. May you keep my feet from being swept away and place me on solid ground. Lord Jesus, I pray for unshakable faith. I want to be so sure of you that all doubts will be destroyed. I want to be so persuaded about you so convinced about you, Jesus, so that if the spirit of fear ever tries to attack me, it will be ineffective and useless. You have given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Let me be firm in my stance, Lord, so that when trouble comes our way, I won't panic. I won't lose hope. I won't be swept away by the tide of fear because I am anchored in Jesus Christ, the one who is my shield and defense, the one whose word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Do not let me stumble, O Lord. Overthrow the plans and the plots of my enemies. Help me to overcome in the name of Jesus. Fight my battles, Lord, as you have promised in your word. 
you said in Exodus 14, 14 that the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. I pray that you defend me and my family and let us hold our peace. I pray that we are going to stand still. I will stand and hold my peace as I see the hand of God move in my life. Because of you, I will stand and testify and say, had it not been for the Lord, we would have been consumed. Had it not been for his goodness, his faithfulness and mercy, we would have been destroyed. But you have never lost a battle, King Jesus. So I come to you seeking refuge and protection. Encompass me and my family, Lord. Build a great wall of fire to protect me. Surround me and my family with your presence and grace. Steady my emotions, Father. When I am anxious, give me peace. When I am troubled, I give you my burdens. When I am worried, I cast my burdens on you. You are the rock of all ages, my strong tower and fortress. I thank you for your protection today. I come to you in recognition of your great might and power. I worship your holy name, Lord. I adore you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for clothing me in a robe of righteousness that covers me head to toe because of the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed for me. And I know that it is in you that I live. It's in you that I move and have my existence. I surrender my life, my children, and my loved ones into your caring hands. You are a God full of compassion. I pray for your hand of protection upon me and my family. I am grateful for your provision in my life. Forgive me for all my sins. Have mercy on me and my family. I thank you for being a God who has been faithful through the ages. I ask that you put my mind at ease with everything I am facing. Open my eyes and help me to see your hand in every situation I'm facing. Your love is what frees me from all strongholds. It's because of your amazing love that I am victorious. Lord, just as you are on the throne, I know that everything is going to be all right. You've promised to meet every need according to your glorious riches, Christ Jesus. So I trust that you will always provide according to your word. I pray that all feelings of oppression must go. I declare that depression must go. Pain and sadness must go. Anxiety and worry must go. When we grow tired and weary, when we stumble and fall, I pray that your strength will renew me. May your presence be felt continuously in my heart. I remain confident that you are a faithful God and you will be my light in the darkness of hours. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praise. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As you start your day, I would like to encourage you to be mindful of your words. What you say matters. What you say has an effect over your life. And the Bible is very clear about this. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. The Bible says, the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 12 verse 18 says, The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. 
Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. All throughout the Bible, it's clear that what you say matters. It matters to the Lord. What you say about yourself or over your life matters. David, in Psalm 143, verse 3, said, Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. And I believe that we all need to pray this prayer. A guard has to be over our lips so that we do not bring unwanted consequences due to the words that we speak. I encourage you today to align your words, align your speech with God's word. There is power in declaring good things over yourself and there is even more power in declaring God's word over yourself. Begin to confess that surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Confess that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that speaks against me in judgment shall be condemned. Make declarations that are in agreement with God's word. Begin to say, I declare that I am released from the spirit of fear, and I have a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and of a sound mind. Begin to declare that I am released from the negativity of the world, because although I am in the world, I am not of the world. Begin to say, I declare that I am released from the spirit of disappointment. I declare that with God, all things are possible. I declare that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Proverbs chapter 6 verse 2, the Bible says, You have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth. This verse provides a powerful description about just how influential and forceful your words are and can be. You have been trapped, which is to be confined, to be captured, to be cornered by your words, by your very own words, the Bible says. So take mind of what you are saying. May the word of the Lord be the main thing that comes out of your mouth. The word of God is living because it's able to address the deepest needs of every human being at any time or any place. There is always something in the word of God for every situation. And so with this understanding, let us pray. Father, I come before you today asking that you would help me to set a guard over my mouth and to help me to keep watch over the door of my lips. Let me be aware of what I am saying at any given moment so that my words are always pleasing to you. Teach me to restrain my tongue and to exercise self-control even when I am tested. May I have self-control regardless of my emotions, whether I am angry or upset. May you help me, Lord Jesus, to keep a guard over my mouth. I understand the impact of words, Lord. 
words can encourage and bring life. Words can discourage and bring death. So I pray that my words may be aligned to yours, King Jesus. Because your word, according to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, is alive and active. Your word is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It's in your word that I can find eternal life. It's in your word that I can be renewed in my mind and be refined of all impurities. It's your word, Lord Jesus, that destroys evil. It strengthens my faith and builds a godly character within me. Your word is alive and active because it exposes the sin in my life. It exposes my blemishes and calls for me to repent. Your word, Lord Jesus, is a lamp and a light that guides me and gives me direction in life. So help me to meditate day and night on your word. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Your word leads to prosperity and success. So I pray that I may be so drawn and immersed in your word each and every day that it will wash over my life. May it help me to build good, righteous habits. May it help me to renew old sinful mindsets. May it provide me with good and holy nourishment to my spirit and soul. The Bible says man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. Help me to take your word more seriously and apply it to my life, so that I will always walk in faith and according to your will. With your word hidden in my heart, I have direction. I am renewed in my way of thinking. Father, I speak your word over my life. I say, according to Philippians 4 verse 6 and 7, I am anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, I let my requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, guards my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. I declare Psalm 23 over my life. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I declare that my God is able to do immeasurably more than I can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within me. And Father, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you for your word. May the Holy Spirit continue to help me each and every day to set a guard over my mouth and to keep watch over the door of my lips. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen to this passage of scripture closely. 2 Peter 
chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Many people are in denial of sin, because sin in today's world has become convenient. It takes virtually no effort to sin in this world. But for the person who seeks to follow Jesus, for the person who seeks to live for Jesus and to serve him, the act of confession, the act of true repentance in one's life is indicative of the acknowledgement that Jesus Christ is holy and righteous. God certainly does not tolerate sin. So Christianity is not about sweeping sins under the carpet or denying that one has fallen short. It's about becoming more and more like Christ each and every day. Meaning that we crucify our worldly desires. We crucify our flesh each and every day. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 says, He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Notice that the Bible is telling us, when you cover your sins and do not repent, there is no prosperity, there is no flourishing, or thriving. One translation explicitly puts it this way, if you cover up your sin, you'll never do well, but if you confess your sins and forsake them, you will be kissed by mercy. People of God, I encourage you to take a moment, let us look back and look into our lives. Is there any sin that you've entertained? Is there any sin that you've covered up? We need to repent and go before the Lord seeking forgiveness. And the wonderful thing is that the Lord doesn't offer guilt. The Holy Spirit will convict, but he won't condemn. So it's not too late for you and I to repent and offer a prayer of confession to the Lord. Here's the solution to unconfessed sin. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 to 7 says, This is the message which we have heard from him, and declare to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Saints, what is it that you have in your personal closet that needs confession? Because confession to the Lord heals the guilty conscience. Confession eliminates the devil's accusations. You and I need to always be in right standing with the Lord. Confession means we are ready to do his will. Confession stops sin from forming and becoming a stronghold in our lives. Now the following prayer is based from Psalm 51. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray that you would look upon me with a heart of mercy. Forgive me, Lord, I'm asking that you would have mercy on me, according to your generous love, 
according to your great compassion. Wipe out every consequence of my shameful crimes. Wash me thoroughly inside and out of all my crooked deeds. Cleanse me from my sins. I am fully aware of all that I have done wrong, and my guilt is there, staring me in the face. Forgive me, Master. Against you, and you only, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. And so you are right in your verdict, and you are justified when you judge. Which is why I bow down and acknowledge all that I have done wrong, and I seek your forgiveness, Lord. And Lord, even though I was born into sin, I thank you for offering up your life as a sacrifice, so that I may be able to obtain forgiveness. May you plant your truth within my being. May you search me, search all the unseen and deep places within me, so that you may remove all the weeds of sin, all the ungodly desires. Show me how to walk with wisdom, show me how to walk with diligence, so that I may not be caught in cycles of sin. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness at the sound of your mercy, at the knowledge that your blood has washed away all of my sins. Father, I pray that you may erase my guilt from record. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and restore within me a sense of being brand new. Do not throw me far away from your presence, and do not remove your Holy Spirit from me. Give back to me the delight of being saved by you. Let your willing spirit sustain me, Lord. Help me to live a life that is pure and righteous before you. Help me to preach the gospel and to demonstrate your mercy, your forgiveness through the way that I live. Free me from guilt, Lord. Free me from condemnation. Forgive me in my thoughts and even with what I have said with my tongue. Lord, I surrender everything that I hold dear to my heart before you, so that you may have the throne to my heart. The only sacrifice that I can offer you is a broken spirit, O God a heart that honestly regrets the past. I pray that you would have mercy. I pray that you would look upon me with forgiveness. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Saints, once again, I urge you to seek forgiveness from the Lord. Go to him, submit to him, and God will heal your conscience. He will forgive you of all that you have done. Confession is a sign of humility. And let us be encouraged as we continue in running this good race of faith. John chapter 14 verse 1 to 3 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. 
let's hold on to this word. Let it inspire you and motivate you. Let it strengthen you to seek to live a righteous and holy life so that we may one day be where Christ is also. Enemies. Enemies are a part of life. As sure as the sun is in the sky, you will always have enemies. You will have opposition. You will have naysayers who come only to discourage. So to the believer who says, I can't turn the other cheek. To the believer who says, but my enemies deserve everything coming for them. Well, here's what I would like to say to you. Yes, you have enemies. And enemies can most definitely present problems or challenges. But we are to love like Jesus. We are to forgive like Jesus. We are to love our neighbors like Jesus did. And what this means is summed up perfectly in Romans chapter 12. You see, verse 17 to 21 says, Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Saints, Let's live in obedience to God's Word. Let's strive to live like Jesus Christ. And that means we repay no one with evil. It means that as much as it depends on us as individuals, we are to live peaceably with all. Let's strive to leave our enemies to God. Vengeance is His. Our part is to be loving, regardless of whether they are an enemy or not. We are to remain kind. We are to remain loving. We are to remain humble. The promise that we must hold on to when it comes to our enemies is Psalms 23 verse 5 which reads, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. So your enemies might throw hate. They may gossip and spread lies about you. They may steal or sabotage you. But they can never, they will never, derail God's plan. If the Lord wants to elevate you, He'll do it in the presence of your enemies. If the Lord wants to promote you and lift you up, then saints, believe that He will do that in the presence of your enemies. Let God fight your battles. Now let us pray. King Jesus, Majesty and the Most Holy One, protect me from my enemies, Lord. Guard me from their ill intentions, from their traps and devious ways. The Bible says in Psalms 138 verse 7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. So I pray that you would preserve me, Lord. May your arms sweep aside every enemy that I face. 
If they speak negative words against me, I rebuke those words and say that they have no power over me in Jesus' name. If they wish me any misfortune, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord would raise up a standard against their evil wishes and you would defend me, Father. If my enemies come and seek to destroy me and tear me down, I look to you, King Jesus, to lift me up and prepare a table before me in their presence. If my enemies, Father, come and try to steal, to steal my joy, to steal my peace, may you preserve me and keep me. Lord, I pray for a heart like yours, one that will allow me to bless those who persecute me. One that will be free to love my enemies despite their actions. I desire a heart, King Jesus, that will do good to those who hate me. A heart that blesses those who try to curse or abuse me. Father, help me to live peaceably with all people. To the one who strikes me on the cheek, I pray for a humble and obedient heart so that I can offer the other also. Help me to live out Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, which says, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. I am at peace because I trust and believe that you will fight my battles, Lord. You will place me on higher ground, far from the reach of evil. I rebuke and cancel every word spoken in opposition to me or my family. I reject every naysayer, every word spoken with the intent to harm me. I cancel every curse, every hex or spell in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare that I will overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony is Isaiah 41 verse 10. I will not fear because my God is with me. I will not be dismayed, because God will strengthen me. He will help me and uphold me with his righteous right hand. Father, I pray the words in Psalm chapter 35. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler, and rise for my help. Draw the spear and javelin against my pursuers. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let them be put to shame and dishonor who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and disappointed who devise evil against me. Let them be chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them away. Let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. Thank you for your promises that I can stand and declare. Promises that remind me of who I am in Christ. So whenever someone tries to speak the word of discouragement or words of negativity, they will have no effect on me because I know who I am in Christ, because I know whom I belong to. So even if weapons are formed against me, they will not prosper because I live under God's supernatural protection. I thank you in advance, King Jesus, for preparing a table for me in the presence of my enemies. I will forever sing of your goodness. I will continually testify about your awesome faithfulness. Be glorified and uplifted on high. I submit to your care. I submit to your will. 
Thank you for hearing this prayer. Thank you for lifting me up. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In one of his teachings, Jesus gave the message that we don't need to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. And I believe that the Lord was telling us to be present in the moment. Be at peace today. Be joyful today. Praise God because he is faithful and it's a blessing for you and I to have been woken up this morning. And so when I think of the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, I believe that the Lord wants us to stop worrying, to stop pondering and wondering about what might happen tomorrow. Stop spending your effort and your energy by thinking about what could happen tomorrow or even what should happen. You are blessed in this very moment and in this day. Tomorrow has enough trouble on its own and it doesn't need you to start jumping to conclusions. One speaker said, don't borrow trouble, which means don't worry about all of the what ifs we could face someday. What if there is a health crisis, a financial setback, or even this type of problem. Don't borrow trouble from the future, but instead, walk by faith and not by sight. Take life one day at a time. So I encourage you today to stay present with the Lord. Stay present in your mind and in your soul by acknowledging Psalm 118 verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Stay present with God by acknowledging that God's word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God is with us and his grace is always available and sufficient for our needs. He offers favour for you today. He offers protection for you today. He even offers mercy and blessings for you today. And so it's with this understanding that I encourage you to pray and rejoice for this present moment that the Lord has blessed you with. And now, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I am thankful for life and for the opportunity to enter into your presence. I praise you for all that you have done and for your everlasting mercy. I am grateful that you are a present help in times of trouble. I have faith that I will find you when I seek you in my times of need and that you will open your ears to hear my pleas. Lord, in times where my heart is heavy and when the attacks of the enemy are many, I pray that you will fight for me, fight my battles and give me the strength to succeed. Though the adversary prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, I confess that I will be kept safe by the blood of Jesus Christ. God will intervene 
in my circumstances. The Lord will intervene to show his might and strength as he protects me and my family from the devil. David cried in Psalm 35 verse 1 and said, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. And so today I too will call upon the name of the Lord when I need divine intervention. I will ask my Father in heaven to step in just as he did for Daniel, for Elijah, and even for Elisha. I am reminded of your word that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And so as I face this new day, may I walk in your presence, in your protection, I pray that you would stand up for me against the evil one and that you would guard my soul against the snares of Satan. Move in a mighty way, Father. Move in a mighty way in my life today, Lord, and clear every trap that the devil has set for me, whether it's physically or mentally. I pray that you would guard my mind against discouraging and depressing thoughts. I rebuke all thoughts of worry and anxiety about what tomorrow holds, about what the future may hold. Instead, I choose to have peace because I will have faith in you, Lord. And when the enemy throws darts of confusion of depression, doubt and even despair, trying to weaken my faith or steal my joy. I pray Lord Jesus that you will protect my mind with the helmet of salvation. Even in this present moment, if I do struggle to live with the uncertainty of this world and all that is going on, I pray that you would help me to keep my mind focused on you. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and assure me that you are still by my side. You are there to comfort my spirit and soothe my mind with your word. Lord, I pray that you would help me so that nothing should steal my peace today. If disturbances come my way, if disappointments knock on my door today, I pray that you would shield me with peace in my heart. Protect me with your presence that brings peace beyond understanding. I pray that you would block every device that the devil uses and every person that he sends to threaten my peace. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 assures me, because your word says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. I trust in you, Lord, and I pray that while my enemies may try and plot my downfall, you will raise up a standard against them. Protect my peace, Lord, and allow me to rejoice in you, despite my trials and tribulations. Keep me in perfect peace, O God. Remove every unholy person or thing in my life, even if the enemy sends people who have hidden agendas, I pray that as you stand for me, you will open my eyes and my understanding so that I will discern their intentions. Defend me from these people in a way that they will know that you, my God, stand with me. 
Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. But I trust in you, Lord Jesus, and my enemies will understand that you are God. You are mighty, powerful and true. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help me never to forget your goodness towards me. Help me to rejoice and magnify God continually. Your word in Psalm 27 verse 7 says, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. I pray that you will not hide your face from me today, Father. Walk with me. I thank you for the work that you will do in my life as my defender and my protector. I thank you for today and for being with me today. I bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen.